I'm Brad Wolf, and welcome to Dire Dan. And this is what several of you specifically asked for. This is a series of videos. That's right, a series of videos, because a couple of days ago I recorded all of this, and it turned out to be over two hours worth of content. So I'm breaking it down into what will probably be about a seven-part series. It'll be coming out this week, ne next week, and maybe into the following week. And what is this? This is adventure stitching. This is what I mentioned in my last video, where I'm putting together Fandelver and Below, the new adventure from Wizards of the Coast, along with Dragons of Ice Spire Peak, Sunless Citadel, and Fury Forge. So combining all four of those adventures and stitching them together into a big sandbox campaign. So in this first part of the series, I'm going to go over my campaign handout. For me, a campaign handout is two or three pages that I give to my players to inspire their character creation. One page is a map, and the other page or two are snippets of information that inspire character creation. This is not a lore dump. I'm not feeding them a whole bunch of information about the world. I'm just giving them bits of information about the local region and where their player characters can be from. So this is just information the player characters would know about the region they grew up in. It's not a whole bunch of lore. There is some world building, but it's only from the player character's perspective. And the players are incentivized to look at this document because I'm basically helping them come up with a character backstory. They don't even have to read it all. They can just pick one spot on the map, read about that location, and then come up with a character idea from there. Or they can say, I want to play a dwarf, and then look at the map and figure out where dwarfs come from and make their player from one of those locations. And even though it's a three-page document, it's really simple to engage with, and I've always had players come to the table with at least something that they gleaned from the document to put into their player character's backstory. I've never had anybody who absolutely refuses to look at it, usually because there's a cool looking map on it. And then in the other half of this video, I'm gonna lay out my plan for session zero and what we're going to do there. I just wanna say one more thing before we get started. Now, this is not the usual type of video that I do. This isn't a polished scripted video. This is just me talking to you while I'm working on my campaign. I'm going to mispronounce and misspell some of these weird fantasy names, but that's not the point. It's not about me looking good. This is about me helping you understand how to build a campaign and how to build a sandbox and how to prep a good session zero to give your campaign the best chance of success. What I'm showing you here, first of all, this is a three-page document that I made for my players. I try to never give my players more than three pages of an introduction to a campaign. And sometimes I do different things with that introduction, but there's almost always a map. So here's the map. And then what I added to the map was brief descriptions of all the locations on the map. And then if you can see in these boxes, these um, little tables, so, for example, Cornyberry. Uh, and this is the description straight out of the adventure. I just copied and pasted. I'm not recreating anything here, not giving myself too much work to do. Um, I think this three page document took me maybe an hour and a half to put together. Not, not investing a whole lot of time. But I want to provide the players something before we have our session zero to give them choices and to help kind of direct them to the style of game this is going to be. So we have here Cornyberry. The Tribor Trail runs right through this abandoned town, which was sacked by barbarians years ago and now lies in ruin. A dirt road extending south of the town leads to the supposedly abandoned shrine dedicated to Savarus, the god of divination and fate. And then I added a table under each entry. This particular one includes suggested backgrounds, suggested class, and home. So my thought is, if your character's from Coneyberry, then they probably, the only reason they would still be living there is if they have a connection to the Shrine of Savarus. So I suggested background of Acolyte, Hermit, or Sage, and I suggested class of Cleric and Wizard, and most likely Arcane Domain or Knowledge Domain Cleric or Divination or Cronergy Wizard, right? The idea that these are be the most likely classes that would be worshiping Savras. And then if you're a hermit, 
in a destroyed town, what, what, what have you been living in? So the suggestions I have here are cabin, tree, hole in the ground, or basement under a ruin, right? So I just threw out some ideas here of what somebody living in Coneyberry um, would be up to. And then I continue to do that. Like, for example, if we go down to Leland, small town along the high road in the midst of rebuilding, and it's being rebuilt by the Lord Protector of Neverwinter, and it's being turned into a fortified city so that it can protect itself from the, the threats, the monsters and um, lizard folk that might be coming out of the swamp to the south, the Mirror of Dead Men, right? So this is a decent sized town, so I suggested any race. And then for suggested backgrounds, I've got Guild Artisan because I figure you're gonna have a lot of uh, business folk moving there to start new businesses to support the the rebuilding process. You'd also have skilled laborers coming from Neverwinter participating in the rebuilding process. But then you would also have knights and adventurers to protect the town while it's being rebuilt. So suggested classes, I have bard, fighter, paladin, and ranger. So the bard might be there to profit off of the rebuilding process to entertain all the workers. The fighter, paladin, and ranger are probably there to, to hunt the monsters and protect the rebuilding process. I came down to Neverwinter and I figure Neverwinter is a big city, so I figured any race, any class, but I did put in suggested backgrounds. So there's a long list of backgrounds here that would fit the city. Most of these are the ones coming from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, because I figured that would make the most sense. So like you got faction agent and gladiator, noble, mercenary veteran, urban bounty hunter, um, lots of different options there. Now, I'm not saying that players have to choose of specific race, class, or background if they're from one of these areas. These are just suggestions to help get the wheels turning in order to create a character that kind of fits the, the region. And essentially, if we come back up to the map, basically what I did here was I took this map. Um, you can see if I go over to the Fandelver and below um, Adventure here, and I click on Fandolin, and I scroll down. So here's the map that comes with the adventure. And you'll notice there's a big green button that says view unlabeled version. You click on that and, and you get just that, a unlabeled version of the map. So I just captured this image and imported it into a software where I could slap on some names. Because for example, I wanted to add Oakhurst to the map as a potential starting location. I gave this document to my players last week so they could be kind of formulating the type of character they wanted to play. Now this week, we're gonna have a session zero. So my expectation is that when they come to session zero, they'll already have an idea of where they want their character to be from. And then from there, have them agree upon a starting location for the adventure. So my players have already texted and let me know that one of them plans to be from Oakhurst. He's gonna be a blood hunter from Oakhurst. The other character is going to be a monster hunting assassin. Uh, from Leland. And then one of the other players is going to be a dwarf priest, a dwarf cleric from Crypt Garden Forest. So I know at least three of the different players and where their characters are from. But then once my other three players establish where their characters are from, then decide where they want to start their adventure. So, so here are the plot hooks that they can choose from. There's been an earthquake near Oakhurst and several people have gone missing. Two gangs of orcs have moved into Leland and are starting to cause trouble. And there's a dwarf in Neverwinter whose supplies have gone missing, and he's looking for escorts to take his next caravan from Neverwinter to Phandalin. So during session zero, they're going to choose one of those three hooks, and then between now and next week, I will prep those hooks. So essentially, I've done what I need to be ready for session zero, and now I'm gonna start building the framework of the campaign. So after session zero, I can just focus on individual session prep from week to week since I've already laid out my campaign structure. So basically I'm building a structure today that I am going to use for my session prep going forward. And here's my campaign structure. If you've watched most of my videos, you're familiar with this by now. But real quick, let me go over it. Two simple locations. These are your two starting points. Um, four feuding factions. These are the major groups of NPCs, and that's going to create conflicts that drive the narrative forward. Six eccentric NPCs and eight magical oddities. These two steps are about preparing to improv. Just having these in your back pocket help you feel confident that whenever you get to a slow point in the session, you can whip something out that kind of 
spices things up and gets things back moving again. And lastly, we have 10 tense conflicts. And these are the conflicts that come from our four feuding factions. And the reason we do the 10 tense conflicts is because it allows us to have that verisimilitude and know when the players start to make major choices, how that's going to affect the NPCs and how those NPCs might respond. But also, if the players just ignore a problem, how is it going to escalate? So for example, there's the people that have gone missing in Oakhurst. If the players never go to Oakhurst, then the villain there is going to keep growing his forces and eventually take over the town of Oakhurst. And if they continue to ignore that problem, then that villain is going to start moving south down the map. Here, let's jump back to the map while I'm talking about this. If the players only focus on Fendelin and the Neverwinter Woods area, then no one's going to keep the villain up here in Oakhurst in check. So what's likely to happen is that that villain's forces grow and grow until they move down here and start to affect other outlying villages until that starts to impact people in Neverwinter. So at some point, the, the players might be really happy that they have defeated the Kragmaw Keep goblins right here in Neverwinter Wood, but then find out that while they were busy doing that, there's been a number of villages that have fallen to the evil druid who's coming out of the Oakhurst area. This not only helps the world feel realistic and lived in, it also ratchets up the tension as you move deeper and deeper into the campaign. So that's a quick summary of my five steps. Now let's go ahead and start to use those steps. So two simple locations. I've already put Nomengard on here because this is what I'm going to use for session zero. Now Nomengard is one of the adventures from Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Now Nomengard is a small set of caverns that are home to a group of rock gnome wizards. And they have a little business selling useful magic items. But a mimic has gotten loose inside their caverns and has been raising all sorts of havoc. This little quest is going to be the second half of my session zero. Essentially, my session zero has three goals. Number one, establish that this adventure does have some horror elements, including body horror, and make sure the players are on board for that which I know my players and they will be, but I'm gonna say it anyway, just to make sure. Number two, to have everybody finalize their character and come up with an explanation for how they all know each other. And then number three, pick a starting location and where their adventure is going to really start. However, I don't expect that to take our entire three and a half hour time frame. So in addition to that, I'm gonna do a little flashback adventure as to what they were doing before all this. And that's gonna be Nomengard. So for our last hour and a half to two hours of session zero, we're going to do this little adventure. And then after that adventure, we'll put all the pieces together. So how did you guys meet? How did you end up at Nomengard? And where are you headed next? So session zero really becomes like a prologue to the whole story. And we don't spend the entire three and a half hours just talking about playing. We actually get some playtime in. And that's why under my two simple locations, I have Nomengard on here already. But then after session zero, I'm going to put the, st the starting location they've chosen and whatever dungeon goes along with that. So if they pick Oakhurst as their starting location, then my second location will be the Sunless Citadel because that's the dungeon that's right outside of Oakhurst. But if the players pick Phandalin as their starting location, then I would have Phandalin and the Goblin Ambush Encounter as my two simple locations to have prepped before the next session. So there you have it. I am ready for session zero. Then after session zero, I will prep the first full game session. Between now and then, I'm going to flesh out the factions so that I have those tools available for the future of the campaign. So really what this does is it front loads a lot of your prep at the beginning of the campaign. I'll spend maybe three to six hours when I first start a campaign doing all the things you're going to see in this first five or six videos. That way, from game to game, all I have to do is prep for that specific session, maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour before the session, and I'm ready to go. So let me know in the comments below how this helped. My intention here is to give you some good tools to build your own campaigns, as well as show you how to combine multiple adventures into a larger sandbox 
And the next videos in this series will continue to do that. And don't worry, there's going to be at least three videos on building factions. I know a lot of you have had questions about that ever since my faction video. And even though these are pre-made adventures, the factions are still really helpful to help stitch all these adventures together. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Dire Den.